the Range Rover. Ever since the 1970s, it's been the world's most accomplished luxury off-roader. This is the new model, and it's the combination of more than 40 years of development of the original concept. That was to create a 4x4 which combines great on as well as off-road performance in a stylish, comfortable and desirable package. But does the new Range Rover, known internally as the L405, live up to the legend? Auto Express visited the Land Rover Experience Centre at Eastner Castle in Herefordshire to find out. Over the past four decades, the Range Rover has evolved to become the quintessential luxury SUV. But regardless of progress, every subsequent model has always been clearly identifiable as a Range Rover. Key design cues include the so-called floating roof, a clamshell bonnet and a split tailgate. On the new model, this is now fully electric. Well, with the launch of the new Range Rover, we wanted to bring together the three previous models just to see how this British motion icon's changed over the years. The very first Range Rover appeared in 1970. Known as the Classic, it was initially a very utilitarian machine with a sparse interior that could be washed down with a hose. It was only available as a two-door until a four-door was added in 1981. A three-speed automatic gearbox, full carpets and velour seats with armrests were also added to make the car easier to live with. But it was the in vogue model which really established the Range Rover as a luxury vehicle as it came with treats such as air conditioning as standard, while the options list included a cool box and picnic hamper. So enduring was the original model that the second generation Range Rover didn't arrive until 1994. Codenamed the P38A, it boasted a massive step up in interior quality to bring the cabin up to Germanic standards. The dash was far more car-like and most controls were neatly located on the slope centre console or multifunction steering wheel. The Range Rover Mark III, known as the L322, was launched in 2002 and immediately established itself as a genuine alternative to luxury limousines. Not only did its larger body ooze curbside appeal, but it took the luxury level way beyond that of any other off-roader. This vehicle was also a gadget lover's delight, as its technology included a dual-view LCD touchscreen that allowed the front passenger to watch TV without distracting the driver. The latest Range Rover is similar in size to its predecessor. However, better packaging means there's more space for rear passengers. The interior is even more opulent too. Material quality is exemplary and the minimalist dash design is very zen-like. You can break the ambience, of course, with a powerful Meridian audio system, which comes with up to 29 speakers. In contrast, the original Range Rover stereo may do with just four. The quality is amazing in the new car. But it's incredible to think in the original car, that Vogue model was considered luxury because it had carpet. It gives you an idea of just how much stuff's moved on. I think it's just the refinement in the car that makes it such a proper luxury car. The quality of the materials, the panoramic roof, the clever off-roading cameras. The reason I think that technology works is because it's a luxury car that's quiet, refined on the road. And yet, as we found out today, it's got an amazing off-road ability as well. Land Rover is renowned for building some of the world's most capable go-anywhere vehicles and the Range Rover has always upheld this reputation. In fact, the original was considered by many as being the best off-roader of its day. And in 1992, the Classic was the first 4x4 to feature height-adjustable air suspension. On the Mark II, air suspension became standard from launch. The P38A also featured electronically controlled braking for all four wheels to improve traction in slippery conditions. With the Mark III, off-roading was made even easier with the introduction of Land Rover's terrain response system. At the press of a button, the driver could set the car up depending on the conditions and just let the electronics do the rest. The terrain response system has evolved from the new Range Rover and now features a fully automatic mode. This makes the vehicle even more capable off-road, even in the hands of an inexperienced driver. This, plus an increase of the vehicle's wading depth to an incredible 90 centimetres, means there's now even fewer places you can't go in a Range Rover. The off-road ability comes down to several key areas. One of them is obviously the, uh, the amount of articulation you can get in the suspension, which gives you that ground clearance over rough surfaces. And that's helped by the technology with the air suspension, because obviously you can raise the car up. The second area is obviously the traction and its ability not to get stuck. 
And that's where the really clever stuff comes in with the terrain response in that car. What's different in the new Range Rover is that you don't actually have to do very much as a driver. You can leave it in auto mode and it does it for you, really. So it's very, very capable. There's no doubt the Range Rover impresses off-road. But really, its neatest trick is that it's just as good to drive on it. This was the premise behind the original, and with each incarnation, both performance and handling have been significantly improved. The Classic, for instance, had coilover rather than leaf spring suspension, and this helped deliver a comfortable ride, while the V8 petrol engine delivered an impressive turn of pace, well, in its day. The second generation Range Rover had revised V8 petrol engines and a BMW six-cylinder diesel. However, under the skin, the mechanicals were largely unchanged from the Classic, apart from added bracing to the chassis, extra crash protection and enhanced soundproofing to make the Range Rover easier to live with on longer journeys. With the Mark III, the Range Rover moved to a monocoque body construction. The big 4x4 was now only available with an automatic gearbox, but the addition of a supercharged V8 petrol engine meant the Range Rover could now outsprint many sports cars, despite its 2.5 tonne bulk. The arrival of the Mark IV, however, sets a new dynamic benchmark. Thanks to its largely aluminium construction, the entry-level model is almost half a tonne lighter than its predecessor, while the introduction of a new V6 diesel means up to 38 miles per gallon is possible. However, there's also a V8 diesel and a 5-litre supercharged V8, capable of 0-60 miles an hour in just over 5 seconds. Both of these models also come with torque vectoring for improved road holding. This is the first time I've driven an original Range Rover and obviously it's night and day difference to the modern car but there's still a certain similarity in the fact you've got that same lofty seating position, that same sense of serene calm you get in a Range Rover. That's definitely there in the original car even though with a three-speed gearbox it's quite noisy and everything else but it, you still get that same sense of serenity you get in every Range Rover and then stepping forward to the latest car it's just the refinement and it's actually such a fast car as well you forget how quick it feels as well that's the thing you often forget with a Range Rover. Handling's great on A roads, it's, you, the body control is well controlled given the size of the car. It just drives like a car, which is a compliment. And then when you take it off road, you remember that the Range Rover is a proper off roader as well. Over the past 40 years, the Range Rover has improved dramatically, yet it still maintains the essence which made the original such a hit. Obviously, improvements come at a price, and the new model starts from almost £72,000. So, overall, what does Auto Express think? of the all-new Range Rover. I think I'd like to drive home in one and not leave it here. It's an amazing car. It's just seen this, the refinement, the comfort and the performance on the road and the, and the knowledge that in bad weather conditions, snow, off-road, whatever else, you've got that ability there when you need it. That's always what's made the Range Rover stand out and I think that's the case now and it's moved on even more with the new car.